good evening we started from good morning to now good evening till good night we'll be together uh we know we are late but this is an important topic because we have a very esteemed panelist dr surinath has traveled all the way from hyderabad uh dr akesh bhatia sir he has traveled all the way from agra and our own the master blaster of the vaccinology in infectious disease dr abesha so the topic is important see name just look at the names because then you will understand what i am going to ask them it's a common confusions controversies and consensus so i am going to put forward all the confusions and controversies so may not be you may not have the correct answer you feel it is correct or they may not we not may not reach to consensus but definitely these are the questions which are daily we are facing in our day to day practice and that's why i am putting in that way so it may be some controversial as well as a confusion creating program uh, questions so uh, i would like to start from uh, dr surendranath hyderabad express <laughs> so influenza yes uh, we had a talk from dr pramod jog that he said uh, it has to be given a uh, you know first two doses first time when we are giving then at monthly interval then you give annually now few questions what is the waning period by which time you think that the antibodies they, they wane so there are some thought that it wanes very fast so whether to give annually or by annually because sometimes you know vaccine strain changes and when you you are at the end of the season you get another vaccine which is having a different strain so whether to give it every six monthly or annually that is one question and i will be asking the all question you can then complete with this ah, okay fine you just first go, go for the annual or biennial as far as the flu vaccine is concerned at present recommendation is to give a single dose annually if you are starting at six months of age the initially you have to give two doses with four weeks gap after that till nine years as far as the cvap is concerned till 5 years annually only one dose is recommended so there is no question of giving two doses in a same year it doesn't arise because the recommendation is not there to give two doses so in one year practically sir how long the immunity lasts once you give the vaccine what, what is the, the effectiveness of vaccine yeah what the evidence shows is that after 7 months there will be definite waning of immunity is there definitely i mean you may not have enough antibodies to protect against the virus so can i go for say uh, every 6 months if i can afford to get uh, you know to avoid that flu presently the recommendation of cdc is also to give only one dose till the recommendation comes we cannot give two doses suppose sir i am giving every 6 monthly what is harm yeah definitely out of the gout line but is there any say hypo responsiveness or something like that definitely i mean effectiveness of flu vaccine is it is not as uh, expected as it should be because it is only between 550 to 60% most of the times it is matching with the strains which are existing in the community dr bhatia so original sin the concept of original sin is there so what you see is if you give an antigen if you repeatedly give the same antigen your immune response may not be so good that is one thing that is especially with the flu vaccine this has been reported so so then again my question is we have been like re- re- uh, acvip has recommended to give it up to 5 years okay after that there is no recommendation but many of rather most of us are giving every year a year and after year vaccine of flu so absolutely there is no problem every year it can be given so then, then after 5 years sir there is no problem definitely we can give this vaccine this so then what about the hypo responsiveness dr bhatia you, you would like to add something see the why primary aim in giving the flu vaccine is to cover the active flu season so there is no point in giving it twice a year because most of the part of the country have different defined seasons of the flu infection so you, when you want to have a pre monsoon coverage it covers you for 6 months and by the time the vaccine effectiveness goes down your season is already covered so giving 6 months is not recommended that's why you have annual vaccination with flu unfortunately flu is one of the most weak vaccines in our armamentarium against diseases its effectiveness may be anything between 20% to 70% and most of the time it's usually on 40 to 50% 
so don't expect too much from your flu vaccine and our aim is to cover the season so give it at a time when you want the maximum possible effect from the vaccine for instance in the northern part of the country it's usually in the winters uh, that you have the uh, flu season so give it before the onset of the flu season where it is mostly in the monsoons or post monsoon the flu season is there give it before the onset of the monsoon let's say in june or july uh, by the way you can add few points if you like to but one question to you it happens you know we usually uh, give the vaccine every may june because the southern hemisphere vaccine comes in april may what happens by the time you give it it comes to september october you see that the patients are coming maybe annual vaccination and the new vaccine northern hemisphere has come now the question two questions suppose i have not given the vaccine that year what should i do and if i have given a southern hemisphere vaccine and at that time both are available what should i choose so it all hello yeah so it all depends in which area are you living number one because though india is in the northern hemisphere most of the part of the india behaves as a as a flu as a, as a southern hemisphere the only exception to as rightly mentioned that is the northern part where will your north uh, winter peak and in that case really of course i will go for the new uh, northern uh, strain vaccine and in the other part i will not wait but give will give the what is latest available to it and then in the subsequent year i will uh, take care that you will give the southern strain means i will give the next vaccine in the may or the june to cover the rest of it so it all depends on the geographic area what is the flu activity and what is the latest strain which is available now i have given one dose and when patient is coming for second dose new vaccine has come now i have option of both what should i, I do i will not give i will continue with the uh, same say, no i will in the next one month uh, in the next month i will come with the southern one means may and june but will not offer the newer one they have given september the southern hemisphere patient comes in october at that time southern and north northern both available they are not the definite so newer one newer one newer one so consensus whatever vaccine is a new vaccine is available it should really speaking if you see the difference between the short interval i would say what you are telling is very short but it sir it comes nowadays i don't know the vaccines come so early because initially uh, we are used to wait for may and june uh, now april we get a new uh, vaccine say uh, southern hemisphere uh, there is one more thing when you see a prevalent vaccine compared to the northern and southern hemisphere the three strains are same only the one strain is different that is h1n1 is different if the circulating strains are different sometimes northern hemisphere southern hemisphere strains will be the same so what happens is practically even if you give a nhr is it a vaccine only one strain is different all the three strains are same for the both the vaccines so you have to take this into consideration i don't think we should not discuss much about it whatever the vaccine is available when the patient comes give it so the consensus is we will be using whatever the latest okay fine now meningococcal i don't know basically now in practitioners we know that we have the two vaccines available one is available which has been recommended and uh, dcga approved to be used less than 2 years we know that it's manectra so we have to start at 9 months and then uh, 12 months second dose and another vaccine manvio it has been dcga approved to be given after 2 years now that manvio out of india has been uh, you know to can be given less than 2 years also now the question is people they think that because it is not been recommended less than 2 years so they wait till 2 years and then they give the single dose of whatever vaccine said to just cut down the cost how sensible is to do it yeah so if you look at the incidence of meningococcal india in our setup i there are very few pockets are there where the disease is endemic and we talk of an endemic meningococcal disease the main target group is in the infancy so ideally as a requirement of that particular spot the vaccine is to be given in the infancy and not after the 2 years number one second the this is a disease which has got shortest of the short incubation period and therefore these are the candidate or this is a vaccine where the booster is a must so because the trials are done after the 2 years in our country we recommend as per the product insert that is only 2 years i think it's a waste of the resource it's a waste of the resource so it's a vaccine which is meant for the endemic area for a particular risk 
and that too with a caveat that you are going to give the booster dose. So that is the ideal situation. Very, very well said. Very well said. That the things are very clear. Now, uh, Dr. Rakesh Bhatia, sir. Mums, I think I heard that Agra had a very big, uh, uh, you know, period when there was an outbreak sort of thing. Even in Gujarat also, we have seen plenty of mums cases in recent past four five months. So, uh, suppose a three year old child who has suffered from mums. After that, do we need to suppose patient has come at three years and he has received the MR vaccine com campaign. He has not received any MMR. Now, do we need to? <coughs> it's very clear mums is there. Do we need to give the vaccine at four to six years? See, right now, the entire country is in the grip of a uh, mumps outbreak or epidemic, whatever you may call it, whether it's from the western part of the country, from Bombay, from Badodra, or from the northern part of the country. All of us are suffering from uh, the mumps uh, epidemic right now. The debatable part is whether it's because of the use of the MR vaccine in the government induced schedules and the missing of the mumps vaccine. Now, this particular child who is 3 years old and has already suffered from mumps. Now, mumps gives you lifelong immunity. So, the MMR vaccine, whether it was given or not, doesn't matter for this particular child because he has already had the mumps. The other two components are the measles and the rubella. Now, as far as the MMR vaccine is concerned, rubella gives you excellent immunity even after one single dose, up to the tune of 97%. Uh, for measles also, the immunity given by MMR vaccine is excellent and if a child who is 3 year old and assuming that he has received both the doses of the MMR vaccine as recommended at the age of 9 months and the 15 months, he is practically immune from measles. Still 2 to 3 percent patients, 2 to 3 percent children will still be able to acquire measles despite two doses of the MMR vaccine. For that particular purpose, MMR vaccine should be given to this child. As a rubella is concerned, again, excellent response to even a single dose for protection against rubella disease. So, from the point of view of the rubella and from the point of the mumps, we don't need MMR for this particular patient because he has already, assuming, received two doses of the MMR vaccine. And mumps infection is that, he is not likely to have it again. So, for purposes of mumps, MMR is useless. For the purpose of rubella, also practically not required. Only from the point of view of the measles protection, which may sometimes occur in at least 3 to 4 percent cases, he may need the MMR vaccine. So, I will recommend that at 4 to 6 years, give him MMR again. Correct. Now, the question is role of post exposure prophylaxis if the in family one sieve is having mumps. Do we advocate it for mumps? I am asking. Measles, it has been very clear that you have to no, give no. it within 3 It is always uh, our Indian schedule is confusing because we are giving MMR three doses, 9, 15 months and fifth, fifth year. Whereas if you see the AC, AC schedule, that is CDC schedule, they give MMR one dose at 15 months and finish of second dose at four to six years. That, no, no, why I am telling you, in the present scenario where our country is going through an epidemic or outbreak like situation, most of our children who have received only MMR, so I think a proactive measure is to give as an outbreak response MMR vaccine to all those who have received the MMR vaccine. That's what I mean. Even the US also does the same thing. Whenever there is an outbreak, they do give MMR vaccine. I'm asking for post exposure prophylaxis. The other sieve, he has not received the MMR vaccine. He has received the MR vaccine. That's what yes. I'm telling. So, it is like outbreak, so, outbreak response. So, like chicken pox, like measles. Mom's vaccine has no role as far as the yeah. post exposure prophylaxis. This is this should be very loud and clear. So, mom's vaccine in a context, close context, is not, not going to help. But suppose if the same child is living in a colony or in a hostel, or if there are some outbreak situation in that particular area, and in that case, it the person or index case has been exposed, there is a definite role, irrespective of the prior infection or the immune level against the mouse. So, it is very clear that for post prophylaxis in an isolated context, there is no role of post prophylaxis unless there is a some quantum of cases in a particular area or a particular group where it is indicated. So, very not at the individual level, but at the community level, yes. it will be recommended. Okay. Now, 
the situation is now we know that in practice we are getting the patients because now uh, with a very good vaccination coverage and good efforts of government there is a good facility of uh, uh, national immunization schedule uh, nip patients and parents they are been going for primary vaccination to the government and then many times they have some complication or just like that after 6 months they come to us come back to us so this is routine scenario i think now majority of us have started vaccinating at 6 months only we start with the flu because primary vaccination is over so patient is coming to me for 6 months flu i given 7 months flu now patient is coming at 9 months now at 9 months there is you know that in government we are giving 6 months and 14 6 weeks and 14 weeks they give pneumococcal fractional ipv okay and with uh, pentavalent vaccine at 9 months if i patient comes to me shall i send him back to the government setup or i can give the pcv because pcv also they are giving 2 plus 1 so if i give one pcv same brand which government is using i am completing the schedule so is it okay because i can give measles yeah, i understood the point okay yeah. so, so, so this is a routine day to day what, issues yeah you tell your point sir then i'll tell mine <laughs> yeah so now i think whenever there is a two priming dose is there and if the six months has passed with last dose you can give the third dose as early as possible as a nine months so there is no harm scientifically but as a routine we'll take care of the one and half year but here two doses have been completed if the parents want if the six months is there with the last dose i will definitely give at nine months uh dr so there yeah there is one thing at nine months government is also giving je vaccine which we are not giving at our clinic which one je vaccine in some areas see okay okay in some yeah, areas he is right in sort of But no no why if je vaccine is given in never area tell the patient to go to the government and take it suppose je is not given if he comes to my clinic at 9 months i will definitely give pcv and an intramuscular ipv also along with mmr that will complete like a government schedule and there is no need to repeat pcv at 15 months okay now the life is not that simple now it is becoming difficult because now we are we are not going to have a stand alone ipv from next month now what yes what will you do <laughs> <laughs> back to square because initially we were having that armor in yeah, yeah, ipv this, in our armament this, 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 this is a different situation ipv no, stand alone so, so there is a scientific explanation that child has already been given two doses of fractional ipv hmm. third dose is a fractional ipv at 9 months government is going to give it so as per that ipv is not available in your case i will definitely send it to the government for the fractional ipv that is i will not like to miss i may miss even pcv but i would not like to miss the fractional ipv it's a very important to for the individual ch- child for the uh, uh, mitigation of the risk and polio type polio by the same time if the uh, patient says no i will not go to the uh, this uh, then then i will call him that make sure that he comes to you at a 15 months or 18 months for the intra uh, that uh, uh, tetrixem uh, what uh, uh, combination uh, vaccine that contains ipv yes. which contains ipv yeah. there one more thing i mean if the child has received at 3 and 1/2 months third dose of dpt there is no harm in giving a fourth dose a booster dose after 9 months you can give a hexavalent vaccine at that time to that child pentavalent the standard Pentab- recommendation is you should have a gap of 6, six months 6 six months yeah to from the last dose of uh, dpt containing vaccine to make it a booster dose so that is one option the one option is the, but I, i will also but, take yeah. care, uh, uh, like to look into the consider about the pertussis computer as well see 9 months is too early for the pertussis or <coughs> booster is concerned so if you are looking at the fractional ipv or pcv yes you can give 9 months but as a whole there is no harm in waiting for another 4 or 6 months and to give a one and half year booster dose in the form of combination containing ipv we can give it at 15 months earliest uh, right earliest is 15 months so then th- isn't it a very tricky situation this is really co- confusing situation anyways the, now the one more thing rota suppose he has received two rota and he comes at around 9 months our guidelines or icvp says not after 8 months what should i do in government if they will go they will give it till one year of age so, so what yeah. should i do at suppose he comes at 11 months and he has not received one rota so i will do two things if at all i want to use in the privacy i will ask in a written, written consent because the rota silk product insert says that you can give to the age of one year so i will 
make sure that I am safe giving it. But the ideal thing is to stand into the government sector where they give till the age of one year. So again, there's a problem. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to catch hold of the patient. Abhi bhi ke jaane do, jaane do. <laughs> no, but I, what will you do then? <laughs> I'm asking, sir. No, I, I'll follow by tomorrow. No, no. I, I will not. <laughs> From I will, tomorrow. Sir, there is one I thing. I will then. not give beyond the age of eight months. That is very, very clear. Thirty-two weeks. But That's, if, okay, if now this brings me. If the patient does not want to go to the government sector, I will make him to return consent, and I can give the rota seal because the product consent says. That it can be given till the Japan year. I think there is some point. Th I have point, Chetan. Sir, you are in ACVIP. Boss. Boss. <laughs> okay. You are. In, so let us say if you are in ACVIP now, we have enough data showing that Rotavac, which is given yes, in the national immunization program, till one year they are giving as a catch-up vaccination. We did not have any increased incidence of the intersusception in the community. Even the Rotasil. Product insert says that it can be given up to one year. So why ACVP is not just uh, recommending whatever CDC is recommending? Now can we, we take our data. own data and recommend that it, it can be given? Recommendation are going to be dynamic. It may change. But Correct. as of now, there is no recommendation. But the, there is a point in Dr. Surena's uh, viewpoint is there is a data because now they have given uh, n number of rotavirus vaccine till one year of age in government sector. There is no increase incidence of intrusion. That's why I said I will give, but with a written consent. That we are ready to accept it. So, so again, this is a tricky situation, and you can find your own way. Yeah, go, Babadu. They have, they have data. They, they have, have data. data, and even now, retrospective data is there. Okay. Sir, no, no, see, ACBIP mainly takes into consideration of private practice, and where the every child is very, very important. And the first dictum is that do not harm the normal healthy child. So even for one case end up in the intussusception, it will be a, a lifetime stigma to a personal carrier. That is very important. Sure. Whereas government is looking at the in general and they have, they have asked for the larger coverage and that is why the age limit is there. I am asking you that question. So <laughs> no, no, this is this is something deviation from the what is routinely done. That's why concern. Anyways, this is uh, this is a controversial situation, confusing situation. We may not get the contract, uh, consensus. Maybe in uh, years to come, we will get some uh, consensus. Thank you so much for the that, that wonderful fear, discussion. That fear of intersession is gradually going away. Yes. There was a time it was paramount. To think of interception when you're giving the Rota vaccine. But over the year, the vaccine has shown a fairly good track record, and interception fears are gradually going away. And sooner or later, the schedules will change. WHO recommends still two years of age. Yes, yes. So that one must remember that is your backup when the consent is taken. The WHO recommends Rota vaccine till the age of two years. The government India recommends yes. till the age of one year. So there's no uh, uh, anyway, worry about the. So let us uh, go to the next topic. That is a co-administration. Suppose sir, patient comes after say four years, five years, not received any vaccines, and they are ready to take the vaccine because they have to travel abroad, and now they are suddenly remembering that they have to finish the vaccination schedule. So my question first is, how many vaccines can be given at together? Which two vaccines you would not like? What is simultaneous administration? So, uh, which two vaccines I'll be giving on the same day? And what is the simultaneous administration? We can give n number of antigen on a single person. That is good. One, two, few, three, four, five. There are, uh, there are only few uh, exceptions are there. So that's what I I will ask. So, which two vaccines which we would not give together? Because I, whenever the patient comes, we I, I will not give PCV thirteen and uh, your polycystic vaccine simultaneously. I will not give PCV thirteen and Menecta simultaneously. I will not give yellow fever and MMR simultaneously. Yellow fever and MMR not together. PCV 13 and PPSV 23 not together. And PCV 13 and Menectra. And PCV 13 and Menectra. You can give Menvio together. Okay. Yes, one intended to yellow fever and MMR, <coughs> but I added two. Pardon? You are ask, uh, aiming for a yellow fever and MMR, but other two things are also there. <laughs> yeah, no, no, <laughs> the no. Which are more practical. My aim is different, sir. <laughs> the situation is we were, you know, many of people are still believing that. BCG and MMR cannot be given together. No, it can be given. They can be given. So BCG and MMR can be given together. That should be very clear. So that is one thing. Now, the question is, sir, IM and subcutaneous. We have many times we give it 
we don't think much whether to give this and this why by we are talking you are giving subcutaneous to intramuscular so is there any harm if few vaccines we have given to be any specific thing this vaccine has to be given im otherwise not yeah, counted so dose hepatitis b and rabies vaccine never ever it should be in the intramuscular and mmr measles containing vaccine or chicken pox should be given subcutaneously but if you give it inadvertently there is no need to repeat it hpv yes hpv also hpv yes. also meningococcal yes can be given are uh, uh, im only or im or subcutaneous i am only i am only so i'm so i think we uh -huh. the only thing is about the uh, patients with bleeding disorders where uh, vaccines which are given generally intramuscularly uh, should be given subcutaneously if they are allowed to be given yeah. Yeah. otherwise you give im only and press it for a long period of time yes. it's about in patient of hemophilia because that the problem there is because if you are giving subcutaneously is practically an off label use yeah. of the vaccine and in which situation there is not enough data to prove that they are equally effective or they are less effective but still on the safer side and the person with strong bleeding diseases they can be given subcutaneous so, for vaccines. here i am going to use a little permissible language hmm. as far as the hepatitis b is concerned and rabies is concerned i think these, these are the two vaccine must be repeated but i am not sure about this hpv and meningococcus yeah. so, i am not saying that you can give it subcutaneously but I <coughs> little using a permissible language, but for if the two this hepatitis B and rabies, it is intramuscular, intramuscular, intramuscular. Yeah. I I I believe the HPV, meningococcal, there, but hepatitis yeah. B and rabies. These four I am only. Okay, fine. And uh, we discuss that thing. Now, ha, huh, interchangeability. Now we know that whenever we ask about whether we can interchangeably use particular brand, we use standard. When you are pushed to the wall, you can, or if you don't know what has been written. you can use it whatever is available with you because we don't want to lose the patient or rather uh, at point of contact we don't want that that should not be a missed opportunity so sir which vaccine you will never use inter interchangeably uh, hpv is one vaccine which should never be there should not be any change of the brand whatever brand you were using you must use the same brand can sir no 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 uh, i can't take this one there is one statement in the ask the experts cdc ask the experts clearly written that hpv hpv also can be interchangeable it can be given absolutely there is no problem for the zero types which are existing in the vaccines so they don't in fact i'll i'll show you the statement it is clearly written that it can be completed with any brand now i think no no i mean the, it is uh, written but preferably you should use the same brand no correct i think this with cervarix is no longer no no longer cervarix was it about it yeah. suppose so, we have given a gardasil yeah, you can for you, now you can go for nenovalent yeah nee nee nenovalent okay now i want to go for cervarix there's no data it's no not recommended there is no there's data no data from gardasil 4 to gardasil 9 it's yes but yes. from gardasil 4 or 9 to cervarix there is no data there's no okay. data that's the problem the same is true about the dpt containing vaccines like uh, hexaxim or infendrix axa interchangeability may also? be done interchangeability may be done in dire situations when nothing is available but there is no data to prove that it is equally efficacious the interchangeability is equally so efficacious. there are few vaccines where we get the data like rotatec and uh, uh, rotavirus hepatitis rotarix rota tec and rotarix they have data then prevenar and synflorix synflorix followed by uh, prevenar sorry once you give synthroix and then you, you give prevena prevena you can give it so there are few data available otherwise we use left and right because we know that when pcv new pcv came in the market we started using it left and right whether it is it can be given or not and people are using it and so this is a thing but this is a point of confusion and controversy now sir cold chain we all are practicing pediatricians so what is the ideal uh things we should be keeping in our uh clinic so actually it's a uh appropriate temperature change so there should not be only a injury or damage be only because of the heat or light but also so there are freeze sensitive so we have to take care of both the things there are certain vaccine which are very freeze sensitive like our hepatitis b and there are certain vaccine which are heat sensitive like our polio or our constipated uh, bcg vaccine so we have to strike the right balance and the ideal for most of the vaccine with few exception it is 2 to 8 degree so you have to maintain this balance 2 to 8 degree 
and therefore you need to have a purpose built refrigerator you can use a domestic refrigerator but you know the domestic refrigerator itself has a freeze and when the door is closed from the freezer compartment there are a lot of uh, cold waves are coming which also uh, decreases the which can also affect the this freeze sensitive uh, vaccine at the bottom as well so i think purpose built uh, uh, freeze is an order of the day that is the best eh? but alternatively you can use a double door fridge not yes. a and frost free also a double door frost free yeah. domestic refrigerator it is the compromise that you can and if with inverter it is good ILR is little see but it is not convenient but but my point is different i am coming to different point Hold now sir you are you are using a <coughs> purpose built refrigerator that is given see the one thing i would like to just mention over here you can use purpose built respirator uh, this refrigerator where you have a 2 to 8 degree all throughout and you have a refrigerator where dr suranar said it has to be double door okay now when i have a purpose built refrigerator refrigerator where should i put my polio polio drops it goes at the bottom if i have got, got five polio vials where will i put in 2 to 8 degree and the sir it it gets its vvvm gets changed if i am using it 2 to 8 degree so purposeful with a fan will maintain the temperature then it 2 to 8 degree if you practically see put it your five uh, vials till you use it them they will be we have expired in the purpose of there is a fan at the top of the uh, compartment that will maintain the temperature at all times i am telling you what the so refrigerator is showing that 2 to 8 4 degree i am because yeah. i am using purpose built is anyone like because see usually opv has to be kept if you want to keep it for a long period of time in the refrigerator uh, freezer compartment if it is for long so, period if it is long so, for a long so what is the definition long whatever polio drop you are using huh it is a 2 to 8 but the extra stock will be in the freezer compartment yes. of the other product. yes so that I, so you And need same, same is for the rota cell life well as rota cell same same thing so, so what so we are using to store it 2 to 8 other rest you say the freezer compartment. so it is reverse in in and domestic and the purpose it's reverse in domestic the polio goes up and yeah. uh, in the purpose it goes down no, no purpose build there is no, no, no question of anywhere. you can put anywhere yeah yeah so in ilr uh, it is front loading and yeah. top loading it's, it's different yeah, right okay fine and uh, <clears throat> vaccine which don't have vvm which are those vaccines like i think most of the uip vaccine has the vvm Yes. So there, because government's rule is there, uh, yeah. all the vaccines should because have now VVM. Meant, mainly meant for the developing country where they go in the field work and they need to have the uh, longevity. So VVM is the good idea. And sir, can you just tell me what is the VVM importance? Like different VVMs, yeah, it is so not I, the same, I no? I do not exactly, but there are for thirty, fourteen, seven or two, and it indicates the <coughs> time for which the vaccine remains stable at the thirty-seven degree. Means the days. Means if the if it is a VVM seven. it the vaccine will be will remain stable for 7 days at 37 degree that is a cumulative exposure cumulative. that cumulative. is cumulative vaccine not only the temperature but right. the time so that damage of the vaccine is a function of the time and the function of the degree of temperature so, so there are four varieties there are four varieties the vvm2 vvm7 vvm14 and vvm30 so at the end of two days uh, that is uh, vvm2 the vaccine will be useless at vvm 30 at the end of 30 days. 30 days at 37 degree the vaccine will be useless at the end of 2 days 48 hours of cumulative exposure of the temperature yes. above 37 you will get the vvm so lost so the practical purpose was the you pair go for a vaccine for 3 or 4 days and suppose your freeze is not working so you look at this chart look at the vvm so all vaccine probably you may not need to throw away you can use it correct it has a positive side also Yeah, so, there, there is a different uh, open vial policy. Huh. There is open uh, the, again the one important use of VVM is open vial policy with with WSO. You can keep the vial for one month once you open it. Right. So now, sir, vaccination errors they are very common. I think today morning Yagnesh Bhai discussed this BCG given IM. Okay, that's fine. We'll forget it. Uh, OPV 
by mistake i poured a hole vial into no it. problem no problem i count that dose count no problem dose. Should I put in RT and remove it? No, 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 nothing. No, Just uh, there was, <laughs> this is a real incident which has happened. Confess the person the called me, and then they say already I have did that because it went in. Confess the mistake, <coughs> reassure them, and it is a valid dose. Count it. It's not it's a uh, non-valid dose. So there should not be any uh, side effect. Now, suppose patient, I am giving the vaccination. I have given MMR, and suddenly I came to realize this. Then they said, sir. I had went to Baroda and Rastatis by Kyo, very similar vaccine. So, 15 days only and we know that, that there is a poly, uh, this in, uh, dictum that between two live injectable vaccine, two live injectable vaccine, so it is a MMR, varicella or live hepatitis A vaccine, we should keep a gap of say one month or four weeks. Now, it is less than four weeks. We know that one of the dose is not valid. What will you do in this case? The second one is not valid. Second one. So when will you give this second dose again? Second one can be given after four weeks of the, the dose of the wrong date. Wrong date. So by chance it happens with suppose we have given a varicella and by mistake you have given some other inactivated vaccine, then that both that is fine. Okay. So that's not a problem. And most commonly there is this one is one a, I think there is one. <coughs> suppose child has received some blood containing products after getting the live vaccine within 14 days you have to repeat the dose correct so somebody correct. got by chance somebody was given immunoglobulin so it is not valid so I... yes and sir this is the most common thing which happens in our practice most common i think uh, many of us must have come across this situation by mistake we have given a vaccine which is we have applied the label on the file and there is an expired vaccine what should we do so again Reassure, confess, don't take the charge of the repeat vaccine. That's the important uh, common sense. Jo, uh, yeah, as far 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 you have to you give it. Me. There is no choice. <laughs> so, refund the money, give one more dose. If it is a live vaccine which is given after seven days or two days, patient comes, ask him to come after gap of four weeks. If it is inactivated, given expired vaccine, you give it right, right on that day. Give I think it. that's. Or any time when the patient wants. So, they can come at their wish. Right. Although, although that's a legal issue, uh, more or less. But. The drug or the vaccine doesn't die on that day. It continues to remain active for a significantly long period of time a, after that also. But of course, the government will not protect you. The courts will not protect you. But that vaccine actually is valid. Uh, it's not invalid. Suppose given within one or two days or one or two weeks of uh, the expiry date written on it, after a significantly long period of time, the, the uh, drug continues to remain active. So vaccine doesn't become a poison. After it gets, it crossed the date of expiry and the date of expiry is the last day of that month which is mentioned. Suppose the IPV which is there, we can use it till 31st of January. Yes. So, so that's important and by chance you have given overshoot. Then see the most common thing what will happen, the person will call you that I have done this mistake. At least as, see it can be me, next time it can be you. Just reassure them. If you are in that same surrounding, if the patient comes to you for that explanation, sir, he has given an expired vaccine, reassure them nothing will go wrong. Okay, that's the important because if that person will say nothing will go wrong, he will not understand because he is furious about him. And if you are at that position, you just have tried to help your colleague. Yes, it is an invalidatory admit, uh, like administered vaccine. Nothing will go wrong. Something goes wrong, we'll be there to take care of it. So I think it's our duty as clinician to reassure and give this message that expiry date doesn't mean that the drug becomes a poison no, or a vaccine think, becomes a I poison. I think we should not give this explanation because we are prolonging the discussion unnecessarily by just telling that it is not expired actually by this date. We are just, uh, I mean, uh, we, we should accept it, that's all, and be very brief and simple sir he, they will if not start, stop stop at that point <laughs> they will not if it is the most common cause of troubles most common cause of troubles in hospitals uh, it, and it happened it happened with most of us i mean it happened with me also especially the flu vaccine sometimes we do tend end up in giving an expired vaccine which we don't realize 
MMR was given, I know flu is given, DPT is given. So many times, so many patients came. But only thing is, we tell them, I'll show the even the literature, whatever is there in the book, I'll show them this is the literature which shows that there is no harm in giving an expired vaccine. There is no harm. Whether it is working in or not, of law, not something sure. goes wrong, then definitely you will be in a there is no harm. difficult situation. You tell them that there is no harm. But preferably, what you do is to prevent this mistake. <laughs> Now again, it's a discussion. <coughs> you will not get impacts that paper from Gujarat. <laughs> and second thing, sir, then you have to mention the date, batch, the date of expiry, everything. But that too, when we are giving a vaccination, at that time date of expiry is important, not that after when you see. Who will tell the visa people? They are telling. No, no. That is not a science. That is not a science. Wo sir, wo to aisa hua ke mediclaim wale bolte hain ke maine bola ke ye typhoid fever ka patient bola ke yahan kahan likha hai typhoid. To maine bola culture mein likha hai, to bola hua to salmonella typhoid likha hai. So we can't explain them. But I think if he is that particular, he is using the scan, we can be at least particular to look at the date of expiry. <laughs> it's good that he is using. Yeah. No, no, whatever, but we can. <coughs> yeah. I, agree. I think uh, I respect the time uh, and I think we had a fruitful discussion. Thank you so much for all of you to be here at this late. Thank you so much, panelists. It was really a controversial, confusing situation. You tried to reach at the consensus with a proper scientific background. Thank you so much, the chairpersons. Thank you all.